Hey, how's it going? Today we are going to be setting up an Nginx um, virtual machine, um, and it's also going to have a SQL database on it, um, as well as it's going to run phpMyAdmin, which is going to render um, the SQL database into a web browser. So um, let's get started with that. First of all, let's check out our virtual machine here. Um, I'm using one of my own platforms to virtualize here. Um, it's based on um, KVM. So that's why I have this web interface here. Your interface is going to look different. Um, but basically, you just want to get the IP of the virtual machine, and we are going to connect to that IP. All right, so the specs that I have today, I have 16 gigs of storage, 2 gigs of RAM, and 1 vCPU. Um, that should be plenty for a simple web server. Now, if you're doing a lot of database requests per second, and you have a large database, I would recommend doing um, a higher scale VM, um, something I mean, even like the two vCPU and four gigs of RAM is probably better for a larger database, especially if you have lots of transactions. And today I'm using Termius. Um, this is like an SSH client. Basically, it's really nice. Um, so we're going to add and continue. And there we are. We are in our virtual machine. So the first thing I would do is we're going to update the available packages. Now, the image I'm using for this VM um, is pulled every hour, so it should be completely up to date. But does not hurt to update it anyway. So sudo apt update dash y, sudo apt upgrade dash y. All of the commands I'm running in this video are linked down in the description on my website if you want to check them out. Um, but yeah, so as you can see, we are all updated. This may take longer for you if you have an older ISO. Um, but like I said, I have new ones that get pulled out really. Okay, so now we're going to say sudo apt install nginx. And we're also going to add um, php dash fpm. And we're going to do dash y. So basically, it's going to install nginx, it's going to install php fpm, and it's not going to ask us to confirm anything throughout that process. Now, some of the commands I'm going to be running in this video differ a little bit from the written guide, but it is not much at all, and you should still be able to easily follow along the written guide if you're working on that or if you're following the video. Okay, so now that that's done, we're going to say sudo apt install mysql server dash y. Now, I'm doing this separately, that way I can talk over it. Um, basically, this is our database server. You can also use um, MariaDB, or there's other database, um, other databases you can run in servers. Um, I've just found that this is easy, and there's a lot of tutorials online on how to do stuff on it. Um, so that's why I'm going to be using MySQL Server. But like I said, you can use whatever you want for your database. All right, so now we're going to set up a root password for the database. So we're going to run sudo MySQL. Um, this is just going to get us into the console of MySQL. Um, but now we need to alter user, and this is going to be the root user, and the root user, I believe, only has localhost permissions, and we're going to say identified by, and then we're going to set a new password. So I'm going to say new password, one, two, three, just like that, so we can type quit. Basically, we just set the root password, or change the root password if it was already set, um, to new password, one, two, three. All right, so now we're going to install phpMyAdmin, so sudo apt install phpMyAdmin. I forgot the dash y. See how it's asking me here? That's what the dash y fixes. If you um, add that dash y, it won't ask you if you want to continue because I really don't care how much space it's taking or anything like that. Okay, so we are here on this part and it's asking which web server to configure. Um, Nginx is not on here, so we're just going to click OK and skip that one. Um, we will need to manually type in the login for the next step. It's going to ask for our root password um, for our SQL server, but that is the password that we just set um, a couple moments ago in the SQL console. And like I was just saying, it's asking. So we're going to tab and click enter. And yes, we want to configure the database. New password, one, two, three. New password, one, two, three. Oh, all right. So we typed in our password. It's just wrapping this up right here. So now what we want to do, I, I think it's easier for me. So if we go to CD var www HTML, you don't need to do this. But so this is our web server files right now. Um, I think it's easier to have most of your web files in one directory. So we're going to say sudo ln-s. So this is going to make a symbolic link. We're going to say user share php my admin. And we're going to link this to var www html. Now if I run ls, as you can see, we have the php my admin folder here. And that's just referencing this other directory right here. I just think it's easier if we put all of our web server files in this var www html. Um, it just makes it easier down the road. All right, so now we're going to configure Nginx. Um, I'm going to run sudo nano etc Nginx sites enabled, and I'm just going to say default. Um, I'm going to use Control K on my keyboard just to clear this out. You could have deleted the file, but 
this is quick sometimes. So we're going to make a new server. And this is going to be listening on 80, which is our going to be our default server. And it's also going to be listening. I don't think you have to add this, but I'm not sure. So basically, this is just saying we have a server. It is going to be listening on port 80. And the root directory here is going to be var www.html. And next, what you want to do is you want to set your index files. So typically, when you write HTML code, um, it's index.html. Um, but you can do whatever you want. So you could actually do custom index files. You could do home.html as your index. Um, but in this case, I'm going to do index.html and index.php. Jeez.php. And then server name, we're just going to set to nothing. Um, that way, it accepts any server name. Our location here. So this is going to be where it sends the web requests, and we're going to try the files of the URL equals 404. So basically, if a file does not match the directory, it's going to give a 404 error. And then next, we're going to add this at the bottom, location backslash dot PHP. So basically, this is saying any PHP file in our directory, we're going to, first, we're going to include snippets fastcgi-php.conf. And we're going to also include fast CGI pass, I believe that is. Unix run PHP PHP 8.1 FPM. Okay, so this is basically going to be rendering rendering our PHP and running the code that's in it. And we can now close this out. And we have a fully complete Nginx config. Control X, Y, enter. And I'm gonna run sudo nginx t. This is going to validate our config. And as you can see, I did spell something wrong. So I'm going to go back here. We're going to find this. Oh, right here. I typed include wrong. All right, let's run this again. Perfect. So now we can say sudo service nginx reload. Actually, before I do that, let's go to our web browser and let's get the IP again. 10.128. So before I do that, I just typed in the IP here of our VM. Just to make sure nginx is running, we should have done this earlier. Um, but basically, this is just showing that Nginx is running. So now we can reload this, and we should get an error. There we go, 403 forbidden. All right, so now I'm going to say slash PHP, my admin. And just like that, we are here. So you may be wondering, how do I log in? And you cannot use the root user. So now we need to create a user. So let's go back to the SQL console here. We're going to say create user, and we're going to say username at localhost and we're going to identify it by password now change these parameters you don't want to use username and password you're going to want to change these to whatever you want something more secure and we're going to say grant all priv will on anything this right here is basically just saying it's giving all privileges to the to the user we're about to specify so we're going to say username at localhost enter and flush privileges there we go and now we're gonna quit so what you may want to do let's go back in here actually so where we granted all of our privileges you might want to add with grant option um if you want the user to have full like admin privileges like if you want to be able to create other users and stuff from this main user account you need to add this grant option so now if you flush privileges and you quit, um, this user should have the grant option. So let's type in our username and password. Okay, so we are here and let's go to user accounts real quick. As you can see, we have this grant option, which so does the root account. That, um, basically, it's just saying we can create other users and we can give them privileges to databases. So now we should be able to create databases. We can create a test database just like this and we can fill in all of our tables and stuff. But that is the basic concept of setting up um, Nginx and PHP my admin. Now, like I said, it's if your main web server files are going to be in var www.html, this is where you want to put your index.html. And as you can see, if I were to go and remove this PHP my admin here, it says forbidden, and that is because there's no files here. So if I say sudo nano index.php, we're going to make HTML. This is not going to be indented, but I really don't care. And then I'm going to actually add some PHP here too. So we're going to say echo get host name and just like that. All right. As you can see, we have a heading here from HTML and we also have this Nginx tutorial here, which if you check, that is my host name. So cool. 
So we can see that PHP is working and HTML is working and it's all rendered and stuff correctly. Um, there's no formatting because I didn't add any, but that is basically how to set up Nginx, PHP Matt Admin, um, MySQL Server, and yeah. If you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment. That's about all. Thanks for watching.